So I was totally planning on giving you guys a cute little intro about the hardworking animals of Animal Crossing since this is a speed paint video of the OK Motors birds and also Lloyd the Gyroid and I thought like the working class Animal Crossing characters thing would be a cute little intro to the video. But then as I was doing the b-roll footage here, I noticed that the big bird at the end, Carlos, I forgot to draw his beard and also the feathers on the back of his head, despite having image reference. So I just ran to go finish that and do that. So this is the intro now, I guess. <laughs> Yes, it's me, Alyssa, back with another Animal Crossing video. Um, yeah, intro aside, this is a video featuring the the hardworking creatures, I guess not animals, the gyroids aren't animals, are they? Um, the hard workers of Animal Crossing. Uh, though Lloyd doesn't really do anything, he just kind of dances around with a construction helmet until you give him all the money. Though I like to believe, this probably isn't the lore, right? I like to believe that an army of gyroids is completing the bridge construction or the building construction while you're asleep. Uh, so that's what I like to think. I like to think he's doing that instead of just cosplaying as a hardworking guy, you know, with his little construction hat. But uh, regardless of that, I thought I'd put him in the video because I didn't want to do a standalone video of the speed paint since it was super quick and it didn't seem like it warranted its own separate video. And I thought the construction theme might fit in with like the workers of OK Motors or something like that. So that was my logic for putting him here at the start of this video. Because some of you guys had commented on the previous video I did, or last week's video I did of um, uh, all the, the special characters I hadn't drawn yet in my A to Z slash all Animal Crossing characters quest. Some of you commented that you did actually want to see Lloyd and the Snowman family and the OK Motors birds, which I mistakenly referred to as penguins. I guess they're pigeons. We'll talk about that more when we get to, uh, to their part of the video, I suppose. The Snowman family I'm still saving for closer to Christmas time. I may do a dedicated video about them, but I also have an idea for a Christmas picture in mind that I want to do that features the Snowman family, so we'll see when we get closer to snowy weather. Though um, I'm trying to make believe that it's fall currently in LA, even though today it is, I don't know, 112, 114 degrees outside. Um, we have air conditioning, luckily, so I'm alive and well. Uh, I'm still worried that the power is going to go out and I'm just going to be stuck in a 114 degree house. But uh, I like to pretend that fall and winter is coming to me even if it's not, you know. Where was I going with this? Oh yeah, I always forget because I edit things together. Uh, I was going to do a snowman family standalone video, I guess, closer to Christmas. We'll see how that goes. And if you guys are still interested, closer to Christmas. But with this video and a snowman video, I will have at least sketched every single character in the Animal Crossing series, including Pocket Camp. I think that's everybody, right? Please do let me know in the comments of this video or any other video if I am missing any characters from my A to Z sketch series or um, my special characters video or anything like that because I fully intend to draw every single character from all Animal Crossing games and I guess now Pocket Camp. I wasn't including Pocket Camp in, the, in, the, in last week's video, but enough of you guys expressed interest in it. I thought, well, why not? It would be fun to do. The, uh, the birds from OK Motors, as well as Lloyd. He was a pretty fun and quick little speed paint to do. His shapes are so simple that like knocking out the basic flat colors of him in Animate took like basically no time to do at all. So yeah, I didn't think he warranted his own standalone video, but a little fun shout out slash intro to the video before we get into the OK Motors birds. And with the shading added, this is the final result. All in all, I think he came out looking pretty good, pretty close to the in-game model, except with, I don't know, different shapes and shading sensibilities. I think he looks pretty good. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And next up is the OK Motors birds. So I had to quickly Google what these birds' names were before I started talking because I keep forgetting. Um, it's Giovanni is the little one, and then Beppe is the big one, and the, or the tall one, and then the like wider one with the beard is Carlo. Um, it gives me very uh, Giovanni, Mario, Tony, that TikTok, the one with the noodles, you know, energy, this one. My ma's cooking dinner tonight for me and my boys. Giovanni, Tony, Mario, Romeo, get over here. 7 p.m. sharp. She's cooking the favorite noodle weenie dogs. Noodle weenie dogs. On so yeah, that's what I thought of when looking at their names. But um, 
yeah, I've totally, first of all, in the last video where I mentioned these guys, I said I wasn't even going to draw them. Here I am drawing them. And I was also wrong about like what they are fundamentally. <laughs> I just saw blackbirds with yellow beaks and my brain went, oh, they're penguins, right? I kept calling them penguins in, the, in last week's video. And a couple of you guys corrected me and said that they're pigeons. So um, that makes way more sense. They're like city birds and it reminds me of like the pigeons from Animaniacs kind of vibes. Uh, the official, or not official, the fan wikis all just call them black birds. Not like black bird, like a type of bird, but just that they're birds that are colored black. So I'm not really sure if they're actually like canonically pigeons, but I'm just gonna go with pigeons because it just makes the most sense to me personally. So between the fact that I said I wasn't even going to draw these guys, I was just going to ignore them completely, uh, the fact that I had to Google their names to even remember what their names were, the fact that I didn't know what species of animal they were, and the fact that I forgot Carlo's uh, beard and everything, like, I just was so disrespectful to these poor birds and I am so sorry. I am so sorry to the OK Motors crew for the disrespect that I have given you all. Um, but really, the only reason I wasn't going to draw these three is because I don't consider Pocket Camp like an official Animal Crossing game. Wow, my thing just stopped recording and I didn't notice till now. So where was I? Um, yeah, I think the reason that we don't see more crossover of Pocket Camp items into New Horizons is because a completely different development team uh, works on Pocket Camp. I think it's like NDQ. I had to look it up. Um, also works on Pocket Camp in addition to the Nint Nintendo team. So I think because that team does its own thing, we don't see a lot more Pocket Camp items integrated into New Horizons, which I think is a shame. Like there's some really awesome items in that game. Not only like decorative items, like some of the fortune cookie furniture is like out of this world cool. It's super detailed, like these awesome bookcases and stairs and little library stuff and like celestial julian set stuff and like all the amazing items that people post and like little rainbows and stuff you can add um there's some really beautiful furniture items in that game that we would never see that kind of like intricacy in new horizons which is a bummer and also like the amenities so here's my thing with the amenities um let me know if you guys agree what like first of all what would you bring over from pocket camp to new horizons if you had the power to to do anything to move anything over uh, from Pocket Camp to New Horizons. My argument for like if I could only bring one thing over, um, I would bring over the amenities. And here's why. Because first of all, in the game, in New Horizons, we don't see our villagers interacting with the furniture ever. Like ever. Like they'll sit on stuff once in a while and if you put the instruments very specifically in front of your town plaza, they'll interact with them. Uh, but they don't interact with stuff anywhere else on the island. They don't. Um, play instruments that aren't in front of the town plaza and that stinks because like my in my case if you guys have seen my dream address I don't have room in front of the town plaza to be putting instruments there it just wouldn't fit well with the flow and design of my island and I imagine that's the case for a lot of people they don't have room for instruments there so why can't they go wander around and play instruments elsewhere so villagers in New Horizons don't interact with furniture like at all um, in Pocket Camp, they don't interact with, like, the decorative stuff as much, I don't think. Maybe they just sit down on it or something. I can't remember. I haven't played the game except to get the B-roll footage in forever. But the amenities are super cool. The things that you put in the back of your camp, like the little carousel is the one I have mainly in mind because, again, I haven't played the game in a while and I remember the carousel. I remember they have, like, a ski slope and sometimes, like, villagers will go skiing on it. Like, they interact with those things. And it's very limited because, again, it's a mobile game, it's a watered-down Animal Crossing experience, so you can't, like, talk to them while they're on it, but it's still nice to see the villagers having fun and riding a carousel and, like, doing fun things and interacting with the furniture that you've placed. And also, I think it would be another great way to set um, another goal in New Horizons, because, like, once you've paid your house off, once you've paid for all the bridges and you've moved bridges around and you've uh, landscape the island just the way you like it. There's nothing else to work towards except collecting the seasonal recipes and the seasonal stuff. So another thing to work towards would be, I think we should bring back the Public Works Projects um, feature from New Leaf. If you guys don't, haven't played New Leaf or don't remember, haven't played it in a while, in New Leaf you could talk to Isabel, I believe, and you could place Public Works Projects, which were basically like big furniture pieces, big amenities, sculptures, um, flower gardens, stuff like that. And you, you had a limit of, I think it was like 10 or 15 or something like that, you could place around your island or your village in New Leaf. Um, and we didn't have the ability to place furniture outside like we do in New Horizons, which I think 
placing furniture outside is great and you can move stuff around, pick it up, redecorate on the fly, but I like that Public Works Projects gave you something to save up for. Um, like you have another bell goal to meet, like there's another thing to put your money towards that improves the look of your, your place, you know? But I also like the functionality that, and I know a lot of people didn't like this in New Leaf, where you could only unlock certain Public Works Projects by having certain personality types present in your town. Like, to unlock certain Public Works Projects you had to talk to a cranky villager when they would like ping you, or a peppy villager, you would get different Public Works Projects based on that. But I think if we had more dialogue as a result, and you know, we had more things to say to villagers, and it was like a reward for leveling up with them enough, their friendship, because right now the only reward is, um, you know, you get their picture if you fully max out friendship. But what if you could unlock, like, in the journey to getting max friendship, once you've reached, I don't know, 75% of the cap of friendship points, that you unlock the ability to make their favorite um, public works project for that villager type, like a cranky villager or whatever. So I'll just go with Peppy for this example because I want to use the carousel example. Imagine in New Horizons, you level up your friendship with your Peppy villager to the point where they're like, wouldn't it be a great idea to make this island even better if we had a carousel, you know? And you're able to then talk to Tom Nook and put the plans out just the way you would lay out plans for where to place a building or anything else, and you pay for it the same way you would anything else. And you could relocate it the same way you relocate, um, like, Able Sisters or something like that for a fee. So it gives you another way to plan out your island, it gives you m more stuff to place that in theory, the villagers would actually interact with, and especially the one who asked for it, I think that would open up um, new dialogue options for that villager. Like, wouldn't it be the cutest if, like, your peppy villager that you're really good friends with who wanted the carousel, you build them the carousel and you get, like, this is just pie in the sky dreams at this point, right? But we're just, we're just dreaming, right? Imagine you get a special cutscene with that villager riding the carousel for the first time and they tell you, like, oh, thank you, thank you, I love this, it's the best thing ever, blah, blah, blah. You get that special little cutscene from them and you also get new dialogue when they're riding the carousel that's different from what they would just say to you all during the day normally. And you would have other villagers interact with the object differently. So like a cranky villager could either be like, oh, I hate the carousel, it's so ugly, it's such an eyesore. Or they could ride the carousel begrudgingly, or they could be like pretending they don't think it's super fun. Like, well, it's all right, I guess, but you always see them riding it or whatever. It would just add a level of like personality to the game that I think we're sorely missing and another dimension to dialogue. So that's my long rant on why <laughs> amenities from Pocket Camp need to come back. And maybe you could even bring these OK Motors birds in to like be the construction crew that helps build the public works projects or something like that. Because I think these birds' designs are really cool and it's a shame that they're only in uh, the watered down mobile game experience that is Pocket Camp, which is why I didn't even want to drive them in the first place. But uh, I think there are some really positive things about Pocket Camp that I would love to see implemented in New Horizons. They'll probably never happen, but let me know what your guys' big dreams are <laughs> if you have any ideas of how we could make New Horizons better using some of the cooler things from Pocket Camp. If you guys still play Pocket Camp, let me know what you like and dislike about it, because other than doing b-roll footage, I haven't touched the game in forever and so much has changed. So so let me know your guys' thoughts on Pocket Camp features that you love or hate, um, what you'd like to see implemented into New Horizons from Pocket Camp, if anything, your thoughts on Lloyd the Gyroid and the OK Motors birds. I think they look pretty great now that I've actually added the beard and the feathers to poor Carlo. Uh, last second here, I finally fixed him before I got the video made, so close call there. But all in all, I think they look super cool and I hope that maybe we'll get to see them um, in New Horizons someday for some reason too. So thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I upload new videos like this every single week. Give the video a like if you liked it and I'll see you next week for a new video. Peace out. Thank you.